Hi everyone. It's good to have everyone here in person, see so many fantastic founders and partners in the room and to show off our new amazing space. Uh, my name is Mike Knapp. I'm, a, I'm actually a product manager at Google. I work on the Next Billion Users team and we do lots of research around the world to understand how new internet users are using the internet and how we can make it better for them. But what I want to talk to you about today is a startup that was involved in uh, a few years ago. So actually, this is the second time I've worked at Google. The first time was from 2005 to 2009. And then another Googler and I, uh, Michael Fox, and his incredible partner, Jody, uh, at the time, we, we decided we wanted to start a startup. And so we went and created this uh, company called Shoes of Prey. Uh, and the idea was that you could custom design your own women's shoes on our website. So you'd come there and you'd basically have this unlimited palette. You could create whatever you wanted, um, of course, running on Google Cloud. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the business didn't work out. And, and I want to talk about some of the big lessons that I learned uh, through that experience, and hopefully some of those little insights might be useful to you. Uh, and these are lessons that I still apply every day uh, here at Google as a product manager. So to give you a little bit of background on the business, it was around for about nine years. At the peak, we had about 200 people working mainly in our factory in China. So we built a custom shoe factory in China. I lived in China for three years. It was really, really good fun uh, building that. Um, we actually used a lot of the ideas that we got from Google in terms of creating a great culture. Uh, in a Chinese shoe factory. Um, and then we had an office as well in Sydney initially, and then we moved a lot of the people to uh, Los Angeles. And we had about 25 people at the time in Sydney, and 23 of them packed up their lives and moved to Los Angeles with us. So uh, we had a really, really incredible uh, culture as part of the company. So how did we come up with the idea of custom women's shoes? Well, we read this book, and actually a lot of my sentences start like that. We read a book um, and called The Purple Cow by Seth Godin. Some of you may have read it, it's, it's pretty old now. And we read this book, it was really groundbreaking at the time. And the idea of the book is you want to create really remarkable products, products that people want to talk about, that are buzzworthy. And we thought, hey, let's go think of a buzzworthy idea. So we brainstormed a whole list of different ideas. There were probably like 100 ideas that we, we had on a piece of paper. And we went through them all and we sort of evaluated them, like would, these, would this idea be a purple cow? And the, the idea that sort of rose to the top was this idea of custom designing your own shoes on the internet. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, that's probably not the best way to pick a business idea, is just like what's going to be buzzworthy. And, uh, but, but it actually came true. Like, we did get a lot of free marketing because it was a, a really interesting concept. Unfortunately, a lot of people came to the website and they couldn't figure out what they wanted to design. So we'd have millions of women coming and designing shoes and then not figuring out like, which one they wanted to pick. So they would often abandon their cart. Um, so my big takeaway from the whole business, from nine years of working on Shoes of Prey, is that painful problems are more important and much more valuable than brilliant ideas uh, or solutions. And, and the more pain that you can find in a problem to solve, the more success you're going to have. And I think of the, the quote of Einstein that's very famous, you know, if I had an hour to solve a problem, I would spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes brainstorming solutions. So after I left Shoes of Prey, I read these two books. And I, I have to tell you, I almost cried. Uh, because in these books, sort of laid out a, a map for how you should think about finding painful problems and finding the right customer to sell to. Uh, so Running Lean uh, and Lean Customer Development. And the book uh, Running Lean uh, it outlines this lean canvas, which some of you may have seen before. It's a, a classic sort of uh, business canvas. But it's specially designed for startups. And the three boxes you really want to pay the most attention to are problem, customer segment, and unique value proposition um, before you start to think about the solution. Because often, as technologists, we love to jump to the solution and we, we think, you know, let's, how, how do we use ML in our solution or you know, what's some exciting new piece of technology? But often, it's, it's actually identifying the correct problem for the right customer and then starting to think about what's the solution. So in our case, for Shoes of Prey, we thought the problem we were solving was that women wanted to design their own shoes. And it turned out that's not a problem that women have. I probably could have just asked a few women and, and they would have told me that. Uh, and the benefit of hindsight, yeah, we should have done that. Um, the problem is that they wanted to look good. They wanted to look good at the office. They wanted to look good at their wedding. They wanted to look good at, at a party. Um, and our solution, ironically enough, like made it actually more complicated for them to achieve uh, solving that problem. Because now they had to become a shoe designer. They had to understand color theory. They had to come and use this complicated website. Um, so unfortunately, we didn't really do our research. Um, and the Lean Customer Development book is an incredible, uh, it's really good to see that so many people want to solve their sales problem. This is the book that will help you do that. It's basically how do you go and talk to your customers? How do you 
don't, you, know, you don't want to ram your solution down their throat. You want to actually understand what problems that they have um, using a really structured technique. And that hopefully will give you some ideas on how to actually uh, pitch your, your product in. The other really important uh, idea is that there's lots of different types of customers you go after. And we were trying to appeal to everyone. So we were trying to do prom shoes, we were trying to do bridal shoes, we were trying to do shoes for my 90 year old grandma, we were trying to do shoes for the office, you know, uh, for parties. And we didn't really have a very specific customer in mind. And it's a shame because there are some really, really fantastic customer segments that we could have focused on. So bridal is one of those, but there's actually others. Like there's, there's sizing shoes, there's um, boutique, small boutique runs. And because we never really picked a, a specific customer and then solved their problem completely, we were just sort of all things to all people. And that unfortunately leads, leads to a, a brand that just is not directed. There's not enough focus. And it makes it really hard to market to your customers, to sell it to your customers, to talk to your customers in a way that they want to be talked to. So yeah, going back in time, I would have probably picked a, a specific customer to focus on. I'm so obsessed with this idea of like problems being the root of, of all sort of elements of business. I have this post-it note on my monitor at work. What's the problem to be solved? And it's not just useful for picking business ideas. It's also just useful uh, when you're talking to colleagues. So I often find we'll be talking about something and I'm like, hey, what's the problem to be solved here? And, and I find that's a really good prompt to, to think about the next step. So what I, what I fear now, uh, if I were to ever do another business again, is running really fast in the wrong direction. So raising a bunch of money, I, I had it up before and I didn't talk about it, $35 million. Uh, we had some really fantastic local investors, thank you to Blackbird, uh, they were super amazing, and particularly when we didn't give back the money, uh, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Mike Cannon-Brooks, also an incredible uh, investor of ours, and he was really the first person to, to put up money and uh, he was really, really good about it uh, at the end of the business. Um, and then there were so many other great investors, some of you may be in, in the audience tonight, but we had this really fantastic group of investors but we, we basically ran in the wrong direction, I think. And with the benefit of hindsight, I think I would, would have been more uh, particular about focusing on a particular customer and a, and a particular problem. Um, so that's a challenge that I would like, like to put out to you. I, you know, maybe you've thought about your business a lot, but, but is there a particular customer you should be really focusing on, narrowing scope, um, really building a really fantastic product to make sure that you're solving that problem um, perfectly. Because as an entrepreneur, you kind of want to do all things to all people. You know, people come out of the woodwork and say, oh, I'd love to buy your product if only it had this feature. And you're like, oh yeah, maybe we can add that to the roadmap. But that's not always the right approach. Uh, one way you can prevent this is to have a really, really clear mission. And I love what Elon Musk uh, has done for SpaceX. I, I really love Google's missions too, actually. I, I think Google's mission is really, really inspiring, coming to work every day and organizing the world's information at a, at a planetary scale. But I love this visual depiction of SpaceX's mission. Um, what you see here is on the left, uh, Mars today, the red barren planet, and on the right, it's Mars once that terraformed it to look like Earth. And their mission is to be a multi-planetary uh, species, for humanity to be multi-planetary. And so there's no words, it's entirely visual. Apparently you see this when you walk into the SpaceX office. It's a really great way of narrowing the focus of the entire company. Hey, we're going after this really, really big problem. Once we've achieved this, once we've created a whole new planet, we will have succeeded. I think that's, that's super powerful. Unfortunately for Shoes of Prey, we started with a purple cow. We, we actually wanted to create a company that would market itself. That's not a very inspiring mission. It's not authentic. Michael and I uh, weren't really into women's shoes. Like we just thought it would be an interesting business idea. Jody was, Jody was the, the, the shoe person of the company. Um, but you know, I think having that really clear mission really, really helps. So how will your company make the world a better place in five to 10 years? And could you create something visual like this to really inspire people? The last thing I wanna say is one thing I think we did really, really well at Shoes of Prey, and that is to have a very specific and uh, directed culture. And we were inspired actually by Netflix. So Netflix in around 2010 put out this culture deck where they talked very, very explicitly about the type of company they wanted to become, the behaviors that they would reward and the behaviors that they would punish. And I'm not saying that that's the perfect culture. It was, it was good for them, but we were really inspired by this deck because up until that point, we'd had a culture by default. And so we thought we need to sit down and actually write our own culture. And that's what we did. So the three of us sat down one weekend. We, we basically rewrote the Netflix culture guide to be our own culture. And what was funny is when we presented it to the team, someone put up their hand and said, that's not our culture. And they were right, actually. It wasn't our culture. But we, over the next few months, we operationalized that culture by pointing out good examples of people living that culture. And within three months, we had actually adopted that as the culture. 
Uh, and that, I think, was one thing that we did really, really well. And I, I try to emulate that even at Google. We try to have a, a very uh, directed culture. So in summary, I wanted to leave you some of my favorite business books that helped me along the journey. Um, if you're a business book nerd like I am, then please come up and find me afterwards and tell me your favorite business book. Um, it's been so great to talk to you about my favorite topic, which is painful problems. And I hope you're working on a really juicy one. And if you're not, make sure you can change it. Um, I think if I had my time again, I would be really, really focused on that problem and that customer, making sure I've got that exactly right. When you do find that, it, things tend to lock into place and it's much, much easier to sell.